that was a very windy road to get here. I feel just a little bit travel sick. I'm not really looking forward to the bus back. Um, where I am is uh, a place I've never been before, uh, at least not this part of this area of Scotland. Um, and it's, it's quite, I, I'm already struck by a, a kind of unusual thing in that the, the, I've seen quite a few dry stone walls on the, on the bus on the way here and they, they are very neat walls and they are all made of rounded stone as opposed to flattish stone. And I, I find that quite remarkable. That must be a heck of a difficult thing to, to do, make a dry stone wall out of rounded stones. Quite incredible stuff, you know. Um, I, I think if you're making dry stone walls, I, I imagine it very much depends on the sort of stone that's around you. You know, if, you, if geology it dictates that there isn't any flat stones, so you just have to make do with what geology's given you. In this case, it's rounded stones. Um, I'm on the island of Arden, and I'm doing a very short part of the... Arden Coastal Way. It's a long distance walking trail, takes you around the island. I'm only doing about six miles from Ochgallan to, I keep forgetting the name of this place, I've called it anything from Blackwater Sioux to the Blackfoot Sioux to Blackwater some or other. Where I'm going is Blackwater Foot. Sounds like an Indian tribe, almost. Um, yeah, it's all about six miles. Um, along the way, there's going to be quite a few caves. I can see quite a few caves marked on my map, but uh, one of them is called the King's Cave. Uh, I'll maybe speak a little bit more about that later. Um, I think we can probably all blame Sir Walter Scott for uh, the name of that cave. Um, so, um... I haven't been able to get a pie. It's just the way the transport worked. It's been, today's walk, um, it's six miles. It's not that long. And most of the day is taken up with travelling. A uh, train from Glasgow, ferry uh, from Adrossan to Arden. A bus, the bus journey was over an hour from Brodick to here, or just a mile or so back off Gallon. Um, so it's just, um, I, I just didn't have time to buy a pie and get to a baker's. I, I caught a couple of tiny bananas with me, so we could be in trouble. Um, I know there's a hotel at um, my destination, <laughs> Blackfoot Sioux, or whatever you call it. Um, so I'll be able to get something to eat there. Um, I, I do also have a spare pair of underpants with me. If it all goes a bit wrong, I can eat them. Um, I, I brought a change of underwear, also a change of socks and a shirt, just in case things go wrong and I have to spend the night on the island. Um, there's been a lot of issues with ferries recently in Scotland. Uh, we don't seem to be able to build them, for one. And uh, the ones that are running seem to want to beach themselves. So there's just a lot of issues with ferries, you know. Um, so I thought, you know, if the ferries were cancelled or something, they might have to stay on the island. So spare pair of undies. If I ever have to give anybody any advice about uh, doing any travelling, always have a spare pair of undies. So let's get on our way and we'll, uh, I think we'll cut off this road at some point and head into Woodland and uh, then we'll see lots of caves. And I'm looking forward to that.
know, I just thought I'd have a couple of these little bananas just now. Um, this is where we leave uh, that section on the road and head into woodland. Let's see if I can just get a hand on what's going on distance wise. This is one of these maps that really doesn't want to fold the way you want it to fold. Fold, you brute. Um, right, okay, I can see exactly where we leave the road. It's a parking place. I'll probably get, um, there's maybe just less than a mile before we hit the, the shore. Um, so that's one mile, two mile. I mean, it's only about four miles to Blackwater Foot. I could do that in just over an hour, even if it takes me two hours, an hour of following, that's three hours. Yeah. Timing wise, we're okay. As I think I maybe said earlier, I want to have a look at inside one of those caves, the King's Cave. Um, I mean, it, it is apparently the story connected to that particular cave is that it was the cave that Robert the Robert the Bruce um, hid in for a while, and the fairy had the spider experience. But apparently, this spider and cave thing as a story never sort of hit the public domain until Walter Scott kind of brought it up. I think Walter Scott kind of mixed a bit, bit of fact and fiction. Um, so it's probably, it, it, it seems fairly likely that it's nothing whatsoever to do with Robert Bruce. But it's a nice story. I think there's a few caves along the way. In, in fact, just on the bus, um, I could see this kind of a lot of stone work. You could see maybe where the, at one point thousands of years ago, tens of thousands of years ago, in the the water uh, would have been up higher than it is now and where the water's edge would have been in a lot of these kind of cliffs and there was some caves I noticed would once have been towards the water's edge but the waters have receded like my hairline and I think when you arrive in the island of Arden it's pretty apparent quite quickly that it, the stonework is quite Unusual, you might say. I mean, can you look at the, um, the the mountains? They're pretty dark. Whatever that sort of stone that is, they're quite dark, and they almost look a bit foreboding, a little bit scary looking. Just must be the geology of the island. And as I said earlier, some of these uh, dry stone walls are absolutely astonishing, made out of rounded stone instead of flat stone. I mean, they think they've cracked it in. I don't know, is it Lake District or Yorkshire Dales? Where they've got absolutely, again, it's a stunning dry stone walls uh, snaking up hills between farmsteads. Um, but these are flat stones. You know, up here in Scotland we can build them out of round stones. See? Beat that. It must, you know, it stands to reason, it must take a greater skill to build a dry stone wall out of round stones than flat stones. You must be, for you build them, you must be at it for ages, trying to one particular stone, they think, right, we need that one in there, this, this stone's, oh god, that's good. It must be quite difficult, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get torn into the, these miserable bananas. And uh, then we'll, um, I've looked forward to being by the shore and uh, having a look at some of these caves. Caves have always um, been handy places to kind of live for a while or shelter for a while and, you know, they would have been inhabited, I'm sure, at least, at least some of them. The, the, the view towards that direction uh, over the water is towards Kintyre. And you know, thousands of years ago, and people would have uh, migrated or moved from Ireland, and they would probably have hit Kintyre first, and 
then from there they did a short hop to, to Arden and then from, from here a, a short hop towards the Scotch mainland. Having said that, Kintyre is a Scotch mainland, isn't it? Yeah, they were just a stayed at Kintyre and then headed further into the Scottish mainland. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll see you shortly. I think this is what is known as the King's Cave. A rather strange thing, isn't it? People have been balancing stones.
maybe unemployed people with nothing else to do with their time, you know. Or retired people with nothing else to do with their time. But it's just, it's, just, um, it's not really much of a cave, more of a recess, you might say. I don't know where a recess becomes a cave. Is there an exact definition? A cave's probably just a big recess. I mean, I think Robert the Bruce did spend some time in Arden. You never know, maybe he did shelter in here. But as I said earlier, I think it was Sir Walter Scott that kind of made up the bit about the cave and the, the spider. I'm reluctant to stand here for too long <laughs> if something falls down from above. So we'll leave it at that and we'll continue on our merry way. I got it wrong back there. I, I don't know what, what cave that was with all these stones in it. But this, this is the King's Cave. Because I remember seeing pictures on the, on the internet and it was kind of this big kind of fence in the front of it. Um, let's just go there and have a look. Well, I'll just end the video here. Uh, that's um, Blackwater Foot just behind me. That collects the whitish buildings. So we're just a spit away. Um, 
It's been a great walk, a little bit kind of fiddly towards the end there, kind of coming along a very rocky shore, just up and down and sort of rocks and things. Um, but it's a stunning sort of area from a, a geological point of view. In fact, just much of what I passed through, there was some kind of uh, geopark or something, some sort of attraction to do with uh, geology. And I didn't see it all. I was a little bit kind of conscious of time. I'm obviously got a particular bus I want to get, so I didn't want to kind of mess about too much time-wise. Um, I mean, for example, th there was a sign pointing you towards some dinosaur's footprints. F pretty fascinating, you know, I wish I'd maybe seen it, but I just, I just uh, watched my time. And also we passed underneath uh, a large hill fort, the largest hill fort in Arden. Uh, and again, I, I didn't actually have a look at it. And th these are all excuses to perhaps go back another day. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that, with any luck of time for a pint in the hotel bar before getting the bus. How many buttons? Five buttons.